Well, today on the bench, we have the Ryobi 40 volt uh, lithium packs. I have had experience with the 40 volt Ryobi stuff in the past. And even though I like Ryobi, I did not have a good experience with the 40 volt stuff. So I haven't dealt with it in some time. While I was, I'm actually fixing these for somebody else. But uh, I just thought maybe it's time for a video about them. We'll just look into them and see what we find today because this has been four or five years later from my previous experience. And we'll see if the packs are still uh, a bad design or not. And uh, just let you decide for yourself. All three of these packs, if I read across the negative and the positive, I'm pretty much getting zero volts on all three of them. So they have all went to zero. So the, I will just put them in the charger to see if it even will detect. And the first battery, no detection. The second battery, no detection. And this one will come on and it starts showing defective, defective pack. But neither one, neither one actually show anything on the a battery indicator. So I just figured we'd we'd take them apart and see what we can find today. It does have caps on these two. We just have to penetrate into the plastic and just pop it up. So that does have the top. However, it's still slightly captured by this sticker. So either we can decide to peel it or we could just cut across either way. So we're in. Okay, so the older style pack, they still do have the two hidden screws on the on the top side or bottom side how you want to look at it but the newer pack it does not have the screws so this is a different design than i remember i believe the ones i had were more like this style and it, it did not have the sails totally captured which i am wondering why they did that because honestly that makes the heat build up you think even worse since it's not the best I would say not the best ventilated pack is it is it ventilated at all really um the only ventilation is really through the the connections and our voltage is 18 volts and dropping I'm not really getting a lot of voltage across the sails. So I'm wondering when that charger starts trying to pulse or output to the battery pack and it, and it rises really, really quickly. It's almost like just this cap on the board, this electrolytic cap. It's taking a lot of that uh, charge and just storing it. I'm not sure the pack or the cells itself have hardly anything. Interesting. So a lot of these cells may be open. More likely open since the, uh, the capacitor is charging so rapidly. And it's not discharging. Just discharge that capacitor. And sure enough, we have nothing. So the pack actually didn't charge up to 19 or 20 volts like we thought. It was simply just charging this capacitor up. Just 
just stick it in a couple of times. If we noticed the pack tried to go like it was fully charged and then it realized it charged up way too quick. So it must have, um, the capacitor must have charged up really, really fast with no other load on the terminals. And dropping back down again. That's also why our um, LED indicator still doesn't light up any LEDs. Because it's it it drop down to 20 volts and keep dropping. Well, we know the cap's good. That's probably about it. So in this case, the pack is opened up, or at least uh, in the series cells, at least one or more of the cells are opened up. So even if you were to try to boost this pack, it really wouldn't do you any good. If we just were to try to put a voltage here, we're really not getting um, enough load. Nothing really but the capacitor itself. Because if we go around to these banks here, we're really not getting much of anything. So, chances are every cell in this pack is ruined as, as I, I found with almost all my 40 volt stuff. I did spend a lot of time or waste a lot of time repairing some of these 40 volt packs years ago. And it's, it's such a pain to unsolder this board to get to them. And it looks like the newer model might be even more difficult. We'll take one of the old ones apart and show you that it's put together a little bit differently. This one is a T15, well this was a T10 on a little bit newer version. This being an OP4026 and this one was an OP4261. We do see a tremendous difference in the board layout. Yeah, I do remember having to unplug the little indicator uh, board. This one's actually built in. And to get this one out, we do have to break through. Either that or remove the label, whichever you rather do. And these are actually T8. So it looks like to me the pack did have better ventilation or cooling in the older packs. I don't really know what they were they were doing there. But I'm sure the engineers had the reason. But if we go across our individual cell blocks here, we see that all these have gone to zero as well. It must not, it must not be laid out exactly the same though. Because this one doesn't even try to charge. And plus, I'm just going to put a voltage across here to see. And all it did was it was just it's just charging that cap up. That little bit of a click was just hitting this cap. Cause my power supply is showing no current. I just got 30 volts going across here, but it drops off almost immediately. So this one, 
this one dissipates pretty quick. That might be the only difference is this capacitor dissipate. Sorry, it's blocking the cat. Ain't much I can do about it where it's located. There we go. It's got a conformal coating on it. I couldn't get to the cap terminal, but that's that's how quick this cap dumps off. So. So it does have a resistor across that drops it down pretty quick where this one this one held its charge is one of the differences. But I'm surprised that they've done such a different design change. The way the fuse fuse link here is laid out and the way they monitor the current through this resistor, uh, current shunt resistor here. It seems to be different. Unless it's on the other side, I really can't tell. It could be on the other side, but it seems like a lot simpler layout. Instead of two microcontrollers, it looks like we have one. Again, unless they populate the other side more, because this one didn't have much on the other side, just a few caps, and it was a few things, not a whole lot. Not really nothing much worth mentioning, just a cap. A dough, maybe. I don't think this one's much different. No, I don't. I don't even think it has a cap. I think its its cap is up here, where the other one's under. But where we have our programming header for the for the microcontroller here, this one appears to just have a reset pin here. RST might go to that little small microcontroller but these packs they're just notorious for ruining the cells in a pack i don't know if it's if it's due to um the heat of them when you discharge them which i know they do have thermal protection or at least they have uh thermal monitoring it's the ntc right here it goes under this pad the new one is right here and close to the same location They have an NTC here for monitoring temperature. And the pack doesn't look overheated like a previous uh, cobalt 40 volt stuff that I looked at. Or we had one that looked like dynamite. Like, like it was cooked. What you usually end up with is having 20 cells that almost all of them are, are ruined. So it's not really worth repairing the pack. Back now with the third pack. Probably gonna be very similar to this one. We don't have nothing across any of the, the cells. So we don't even have any cluster or cell packs that really have any any charge left on them. some voltage across here it's gonna do the same thing it's just gonna drop off as this as this cap is dropping across that bleed resistor so what we have here is 60 cells that are pretty much ruined so what I have now is I have my power supply set for four volts and no more than one and a half amp of current and I'm going across, I'm going to call this the first bank here, of cells, which this side is going to be negative. We can see, we can see the pack here, which side is like negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So being careful, I'm going to go across positive on this positive side where it comes up and solders through right here. 
and I'm going to go to negative. And I know it's just off camera, but um, I'm getting about 1.5 amps. So actually, this these cells here, even though they read zero, they are actually trying to charge and try to revive a little bit. I don't recommend trying to get a pack that went to zero boosted up too often unless you know that you know you don't have short or bad cells in there so I definitely wouldn't do it in while they're in series this is actually doing these two in parallel at this, at this time so we'll just see if it'll boost up and what we'll do is we'll go on until we find which cluster is probably bad so is it worth repairing the pack probably not but if nothing else, I can recycle and use some of these cells if they're reviving the capacity is still good enough to use in other projects, not really for a tool battery. But um, I'm going to just let this sit here and it's drifting up to 3.5 volts now. And I'm just going to let it sit here and let the current drop down as the voltage comes up to 4 volts. And just see if we have luck with this first set. So one thing I've done as a last ditch effort here is um, just went across the individual cell clusters and I've just taken a couple resistors and just soldered them on to have a contact point I can latch on to. This half of the pack here has been done and I moved the resistors over to these pads so I can simply go across and zigzag. Um, of course this side we can grab these little uh, clips are perfect just to grab on if we just make our way across the um, 2P bank in each cell pack. Since all these packs went so low and it wouldn't even charge across, putting 30 or 40 volts across here showed like it was no load. It wouldn't even try to, um, wouldn't even try to charge. We just go across the individual cell packs and try to find the one that may be the most problematic. Right now they pretty much all have been around one and a half volt when you first put the voltage on it it goes up to about one and a half volts and I got it about 1.7 amps. Since it's two cells I can go probably up to two amps but I'm just being careful because if one of them's bad and shorted then all that current will go through just one so I'm staying at about 1.6, 1.7 amp on the current limit control and I'm putting around uh, 4 volts max output. So right now this one's already at 3.4. So equalizing, for example, here. We're showing about 3, right at 3.3 volts out here on the battery itself. And I'm saying CC control at 3.4 volts output from the supply at 1.7 amps currently. So I did just try to see if I could charge up the cells and see which ones would hold a charge and which ones would actually deplete and go back down to zero because obviously something on these packs are definitely taking them down to zero and the Ryobi 40 volt stuff um, as we see here made by TTI you see it on there the Ryobi 40 volt and in particular is really bad about the pack going to going to zero volts on you. Like I mentioned I had a uh, pack several years ago that was similar to these these older style packs. So we had the one newer style pack that um even though the design had been modified it's still similar as far as you have your MOSFET or your transistors here that that do interrupt or stop the supply from the battery. So instead of the tool shutting down based on the battery's command, the Ryobi batteries, a lot of them, at least a good many that TTI make, I think, they, they actually have the, the power device on the pack, which can be good and bad, right? If, if something does go wrong and pull down low and you can't get it to charge again, if you don't watch it, you know, with the, with the components on board, it can actually pull the pack up, down even lower. And typically it will eventually get it unrecoverable right and go to zero so that's what's happened here 
with all three of these packs here. Almost the identical same thing. I'm, I doubt it's the same placement in the pack. I hadn't uh, verified verified that enough to know. I just I spent more time with this one as far as trying to locate where the problem is. I do know that I had some sales. I boosted up to close to four volts, somewhere between 3.6 and 3.8 volts. I wasn't real particular with where I stopped at. I just charged them up enough to see if they would hold and I monitored to see if they would drop. And we got some this that this held really well. So these cells, what I'm gonna do instead of trying to replace this, instead of trying to repair this pack, I got some cells here that are good, and then I got some here that are definitely bad. The last side I charged up was this one. And this is actually the only bank that held on this whole side. As we can see here. And I actually took time to charge all these up. So all in all, I got it up to like 21 volts, but still, <clears throat> there's so many bad cells in this pack, and all I can figure is the Ryobi onboard BMS is so bad about pulling these packs down. Um, for one thing, they're so they're so close together, and the heat, I believe, just kills some of the cells because they just don't really get ventilation and cooling. I don't think they get proper cooling, you know, but depending on how much load. They do have um, thermistors that should shut it down if everything's working correctly, but but still I just think the life of the packs just aren't what they should be. So with that being said, I'm going to take these, and I don't think I've ever done a video on it. It was before my video days, but I have I have always kind of harvested these, these sales. Um, I never take the ones that had been completely depleted and actually used them in another uh, battery pack or a good pack. But I do actually sometimes take the ones in a pack that I, I have located the, the damaged cells. And if I put these in a slow charger, like my little, um, my just 18650 charger, and let them slowly charge at 500 milliamps and see if they'll charge up to 4.2 volts and see if they'll hold. And then I'll do a discharge test. And if they got pretty good capacity, I will still use them for things like battery banks, flashlights, and things of that nature. So there's still some good recycle use for some of the batteries. And of course, the ones that are uh, totally gone, we can definitely recycle them, make sure they get to a recycle facility. But, but I did give this pack a try just to see if it was any difference between this one and the new style. So what I have done, I have taken the screws out of this board and I've taken these two screws out here because I never have taken one of these loose. So instead of boring you with me unsoldering the board, it'll probably take a good while. I just actually, I'm gonna separate it. And it does actually have some screws right here. It would be done already pop the loose. But there we go. So before I end of the video, I did just want to take a few of these cells out and just give you a good look at them. I actually have not seen these cells. A little bit different way they got them mounted in here too. So I did actually have to pry the board up. Just gonna be the best way to do this. really doesn't take that long to harvest these cells so if you can get a hold of some of these it's actually it's actually a pretty good thing to do and uh, you can put them to some good uses I think
I've always enjoyed it. We do have some clips in here. You can see that. One, two, three. So those clips do have it together. Other than that, the cell's ready to come out. So I've gotten my long reach needle nose and I have pushed these little clips in, if you can see that. I've just squeezed them. <clears throat> and I think it's starting to move. It is, it's, it's just tight. All the cells, um, the friction of all the cells squeezed together at once there. So that's what I was doing, trying to squeeze those clips in. So relatively easy um, to harvest the cells. And, and by the way, that's the cells that's in this newer style pack. Instead of the Samsung, this is the LG. Similar rating though. I'm gonna do the same thing with this side and I'll be right back. That one popped off pretty easy. So one thing about this board, I'll probably keep the uh, NTCs and I'll probably keep the uh, MOSFETs just for other projects in the heat sink. But one thing I do want to keep off of these boards is take the time to, to desolder this connector. Because as I showed in a previous video, I have taken these connectors and I still run my 40 volt Ryobi stuff that I bought years ago. And since the batteries didn't hold up, I run them off of two like Makita batteries. You could do Milwaukee or whatever, right? But I had the little adapter plates for Makita batteries. So, so that's what I did. And that was probably four or five, six years ago. So, so it's worth keeping that and rigging up. Just saw on the terminals. You can do your 20 volts in a series and use them if you want to. Or make your own 40 volt packs. So I just snipped across this board. And I'll just have these for later if I need to remove them, I can. If I want to use them for a project, something of that nature. May even keep this diode here. Short lead, but we can still solder onto it. May keep it. And for me, my next step, even though it seems a little time consuming, is I just take a charger similar to this night core. You can charge two at a time at a slow uh, 500 milliamp rate. And this will take um, probably three to four hours, depending on how far it's discharged. So this is a time consuming thing, but you know, keep in mind, I don't sit here and watch it. I just set it aside. I'm gonna clean my bench off and then um, I'll get on to my next project, you know, but I will go through all these cells and I'll come back on a video and let you know um, how they fared, how many I saved out of the pack of 20 that I've done so far. One thing, when this many batteries get pulled down that low when a pack's faulty, sometimes a charge is similar to mine that's uh, multiple chemistry. When it's like one volt to 1.5 volts, it actually wants to charge it like it's a NICAD sometimes. So. You might actually have to take your power supply and just boost it up to maybe two and a half volts or so, just so this charger can pick it up. Some sometimes just bumping it like it is a NICAD and just letting it bump up fast. Sometimes it'll go above, say 1.4 to 1.5 volts, and then sometimes it'll pick it up as a lithium ion. This charger is pretty good about charging it, but sometimes it's okay to to take a power supply and just bump it up a little bit with a current limited to, you know, an amp or less. And if it starts getting warm, I go ahead and stop and, you know, cancel the test and just recycle that battery. But um, as most people know that watch my videos, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of boosting packs. 
but if you have an individual cell you're testing I, I will do it sometimes to keep it as as we said earlier just for a light duty uh, flashlight or some other type of application because they still have um they still have life just not much capacity uh, not as much capacity as they had when they were new I definitely wouldn't use them in a in a tool pack unless they do charge up good and, uh, and discharge good they don't get warm while you're charging them because at 500 milliamps you know you shouldn't really get warm so so guys trying to save a lot of time off camera I went through and took these apart separated out <clears throat> I left some of them as in, as in 20 volt clusters and all these cells balanced out pretty good um, recovered a lot nicely than I thought they would have I guess the cells were still pretty new and these cells in the newer pack are in really good condition even though they have pulled lower than we should have uh, ever had them go charging these up individually in the 18650 charger I got a bunch of cells right at 4.1 volts charged up ready to go for different projects um, it's not my first issue that I had with the Ryobi 40 volt stuff as I had said before I really just recommend you know it at the most if you still want to keep the device right is keep this pad use it to connect two 20 volt batteries you can either use a Milwaukee or Makita batteries as I showed in a previous video how I did that but I mean really it's something that a TTI Ryobi is doing with the circuit board and unfortunately it's not even just the old style board even the one that they're calling it looks like revision L the newer board I mean it, it pulled these cells down to nearly zero volts too and I don't really know why but it's a good way to harvest cells used for miscellaneous things and um I guess miscellaneous products you might want to power I don't know how much the capacity of these is is um affected yet but I do know the few that I checked have been pretty close to capacity so if you need some little 20 volt packs to make your own BMS or just 20 volt packs for your bench individual cells try to get a hold of some rail 40 volt packs I mean that's one thing that they're going to be good for I hadn't had good luck repairing them the ones that have had bad cells if I replaced them they just didn't hold up that long and and for some reason even the newer like we was talking about the newer style pack even I guess the BMS pack is uh, pulling these down the one thing that I'm guessing because I hadn't even took time to really look into it that hard. I guess no better luck than I had with Ryobi. I didn't even waste much time on it. But the way that Ryobi uses the pack to cut the uh, the power to the output, I guess they can sell their individual tools cheaper by doing that. I'm, I'm just guessing. But their individual tools, you know, they can keep the, the cost of the tool, I guess, considerably cheaper, right? I mean, it can almost be a dumb tool. It ain't even got to have speed control, maybe in some cases, just a pretty much a motor and a switch right and the battery is doing all the smarts it's, it's killing your output to your battery if it picks up a temperature fault or overload condition or under voltage and over discharge right so it's all happening here which I'm wondering at times if it's not pulling the battery down so just a thought if you like this video with, about harvesting these 18650 cells and a look at this Ryobi 40 volt battery please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching.